Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, my Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone, Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the Song of Solomon. <clears throat> the voice of my beloved, look, he comes, leaping upon the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing in at the windows, looking through the lattice. My beloved speaks and says to me, arise my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past, the rain is over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, and now we'll read our psalm responsibly. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord, the Lord is, is lo loving to everyone, and God's Thank compassion is over all creation. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power. 
that the peoples may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. The Lord is faithful in all that is spoken and merciful in all that is done. The Lord upholds all those who fall. The Holy One lifts up those who are bowed down. Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said to the crowd, to what will I compare this generation? It is like children playing in the marketplace and calling to one another, we played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say, he has a demon. And the son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, O God, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Have you ever done this? Have you ever gone into the kitchen and opened the refrigerator and just looked and looked and looked? Like you wanted to eat something, but you weren't exactly sure what you wanted to eat? 
Or have you ever gone on the computer or looked through a catalog and you just know you want to get something but you're not exactly sure what it is you want to get? Or how about this? Have you ever wanted, um, what was the other one, like a book or some other thing and you just weren't sure what it was but you figured if you kept looking you would find it? Well. Ronald Rollhauser, a theologian and um, really meaningful writer, in his book, The Holy Longing, talks about humanity and talks about how we are chronically uneasy, chronically unsatisfied with life. In fact, our, our default position is restless anxiety. It's not restful, it's not calm and peaceful. Rather, it's almost like we're being pushed from some invisible force to do things that we're not even clear we understand why. That creates a kind of unhappiness uh, that we can't really uh, identify and meet. In fact, he talks about this as like a holy longing, that we're longing for something we aren't quite sure what we want. One might even argue that we're longing for something that we as human beings have lost and we're looking for. And maybe the last time human beings even knew what it was, was back in the Garden of Eden. Because it was back there that humanity had probably everything we needed, if you use that creation story as a metaphor. But even there, those first humans chose something that they longed for or wanted over what they still already had. So there we are. What do we do with this dissatisfaction, with this, this need to keep filling up that hole inside ourselves? What do we do about it? Especially in a time right now where there are so many things in our culture and in our world that feel uneasy that it just contributes to that restlessness and uncertainty. Well, I would suggest that the first thing that we should do is name what the disease is, the dis-ease. What is it for us? Where are the places in our own lives where we are using that longing inappropriately, where we're kind of hoarding lots of stuff because we think that whatever that next thing is is going to make us feel better and we add it to the pile of things we already have. Or maybe it's the, the food that sort of temporarily meets that longing. Maybe it's relationships. Maybe it's any number of possible things. Accruing knowledge sometimes feels like if I just keep getting those degrees, I will feel more fulfilled. But the truth is, None of that works. And for each of us, it's important to name where those longings are and what they are and to then be still and think about what am I really longing for? Augustine, the famous theologian from the fourth century said that all of us are restless, that our hearts are restless until they find our rest in you, O oh God. Both the readings we heard today talk about a kind of possible fulfillment. That Hebrew scripture where we see the longing for uh, the, the lovers to be united, that is a, a metaphor that has been named over and over by rabbis and Christians as a way of showing the fulfillment that comes in the intimacy of relationship with God. And Jesus, in his gospel, is inviting us not to have our expectations met, but to have his expectations met, to meet him on his terms. Because when we do, we find rest for our souls. That's not always easy to do. It's not always easy to understand how to move from a place where everything around us overwhelms us, to move to a place where we're centered and focused in God. The first way is to name the disease, to name that nothing we've tried is really going to fulfill us deeply and fully. And then the next thing we need to do is to make space for God to be intentional about how to find that openness, that place where our minds and our hearts and our bodies are just still so that we can experience God. 
that same uh, author, Ronald Rollhauser, talks about four ways that we can know that we are finding our way into the fullness of peace with God. Sort of like saying, how do we take the yoke upon ourselves, the teaching as the yoke a yoke was basically like what the ox put around his shoulders, and it's the teachings of Jesus that we take on, and that helps us pull the cart of our lives. And that yoke of Jesus' teaching, as Ronald Rollhauser kind of paraphrases it for modern understanding, is to have a private life of prayer and integrity. That what people see in our public life is consistent and seamless with who we are in our private life. And then he talks about that we need to be people who act for justice. That justice needs to be a part of who we are and how we look at the world. Not simply justice like abiding by whatever civil laws are around, but the law of love, the law that God lays down for us, of loving God with our whole heart, mind, and soul, and loving our neighbors as we love ourselves. That kind of law, that kind of justice, is what should be guiding us. Stephen Carter says that justice, real justice, is what love looks like in public policy. That's what we need to be advocating for. And then Rollheiser talks about how we need to not neglect community worship. <laughs> Easier said than done right now. But the idea of being together with other people who are also worshiping and loving God is really critical for us. Jesus had those disciples. They stayed with him all the time. This idea of being with one another is critically important. The whole idea of I am spiritual but not religious is problematic because we need to be in a community and spiritual but not religious I don't know what that community looks like. Maybe it's bars, maybe it's yoga studios, but odds are the relationships there are not focused around the spirituality. So how do we find that place? What does it look like when we find that fulfillment, when we begin to live our lives so that we are fulfilled and finding ourselves more and more centered and resting in God? That's the question I invite you to ask yourself. And I myself want to answer, for me, it's important. And we need to not keep so distracted that we start to forget what it looks like. So here's the thing. Remember how I mentioned that story of Eden and how probably those first humans had this intimacy and relationship with God and creation, and somehow it got lost. That longing got misplaced. Well, some scholars argue that when we look at the Song of Solomon, what we are seeing is the reversal of the curse that drove Adam and Eve out of the garden. In other words, the curse of constantly having to work, constantly being distracted for our security, for our entertainment, for our well-being. Instead, Song of Solomon invites us back into the garden, into that intimacy where the doves return and the creation surrounds us in harmony and peace and where our relationship with God stabilizes us and helps us sense the beauty and fulfillment that comes when we are at rest in God. Jesus invites us to turn toward him, to turn toward him with our whole hearts so that the fulfillment that we long for is found. And when we find that fulfillment, we find our proper place as priests in the world that is God's temple, as stewards in a world that longs for nurture and love. And for us, in our little corners of the world, we find the wideness, grace, and mercy of God's love. Come unto me, Jesus said, you who are weary and find rest.
died for a look at the Savior and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim. profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, 
and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the life, resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayers of the People Come to prayer, all who labor and are heavy laden, and God will give us rest. Our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you, O God. Teach us to tame our restlessness, guide us to our fulfillment, Reveal yourself to us, we pray. Now in prayer, we come to praise, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you for the revelation of your gift of abundant life and for the rest that comes when we put our trust in you. For such life and rest, we pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. We thank you for entrusting us with the message of grace that we might speak words of promise and hope to our communities. We pray especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, Dion, our bishop, Rebecca, our rector, for the Holy Cross Church in Poplar Bluff, and Annette, their rector. For boldness and vision, we pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We thank you for leading us into ways of peace, and for the family and friends, teachers and clergy, who assist our growth in grace. For such companions through life, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We thank you for the gifts of creation and for wholesome times of creation. We thank you for democracy and civic virtues that enable us to live in peace and protect the beauty of our country. For such times of harmony and good stewardship, we pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. Him. We thank you for those who tend the sick, accompany the frustrated, visit the lonely, comfort the dying, confront the addicted, or minister to any in need. For such attention to human anguish, we pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We thank you for sustaining all who are oppressed, all who suffer for reasons of conscience, all who are passionate for justice. We pray for our siblings in Hong Kong who are putting their lives at risk for the sake of their commitments to democracy. We pray for those in our own land who are sacrificing their own safety for the well being of others. For such times as these, we pray, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray especially for Sarah Ammon and her mother Ellen, Heather Morgan, Jeff Mallory, Braylin's parents, Henry Rahi, Carol Brown, Sergio Castaneda Vargas, Indus Alexander, Clyde Ragland, Scott, Meg, and Ben, Sharon Underwood, Bill Leslie, Richard Butler, Maureen Harris, Betty Thomas, Betty Breer, George Simpson, and Larry Throgmorton. I invite you to name those for whom you wish to pray. Pray for the soul of the unknown. For such signs of the coming kingdom, we pray, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you invite us to come to you, learn from you, and discover the freedom and rest that life with you entails. Help us to place our longings in your hands. Help us to choose to answer your invitation. For your unfailing love and faithfulness, we give you thanks. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most, Most merciful God, God we confess, we confess that we sinned yes, against you in God, God word, word and deed. 
by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Beloved friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. Let us offer unto God the offerings of our lives to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and life, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and creator of all. Jesus stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night before he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us keep, keep the, the feast. feast. Alleluia! You are invited to receive the Blessed Sacrament this afternoon from 6 to 6.30. And if you are unable to attend, I especially uh, encourage you to pray this prayer with me as we conclude. In union, O Lord, with the faithful of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrate, celebrated, we desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. We present to you our souls and bodies with the earnest wish that we may always be united to you. And since we may not be able to receive you sacramentally, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with all the love of our souls. Let nothing ever separate you from us. May we live in you and may you live in us, both in this life and in the life to come. Amen. May you this week find the source of fulfillment and peace. May you take the yoke of Jesus upon you, the teachings of Jesus, and learn from them. And the blessing of the triune God, Redeemer, Sustainer, and Creator be upon you and remain with you this day and forever. Amen. and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Friends, we have a few announcements. Um, hopefully you can stay for the check-ins. I uh, want to encourage you, if you haven't participated in our discussion and learning class on Tuesday nights about white culture, I encourage you to attend this final one on Tuesday night. It's not cum it's cumulative, but you can have missed and not um, be completely lost. So I encourage you to be a part of that this Tuesday night at seven. Compline continues very consistently Monday and Wednesday. I will say we're a little spotty on Fridays, but we're gonna keep trying. Um, and please continue to remember St. Paul's in your giving. And not only in your pledges and loose plate offerings, but also if you're able to donate, um, there are some goods that are listed there um, that you could donate that would support our church. And, and then also we have someone who needs a washing machine. So 
a little bigger on that one. Um, if you would like to receive a goofy card and would like to give a goofy card, it doesn't have to be a Christmas card. I don't know where in the world you'd find a Christmas card unless you had one in, in ready for next year. But if you'd like to exchange cards, um, we have a sign up on our website because we're doing Christmas in July. All your favorite Christmas hymns or at least a few of them and a cameo appearance from perhaps your favorite Christmas baby. So uh, please feel free to um, sign up on our website for that, and that'll be two Sundays from now. Next Sunday, uh, I will be out of town. We will have a guest presider and preacher, and she will be either preaching and presiding from her home or here in the church. But as, other than that, for you, everything will be the same. So just participate at 1015 next Sunday, and. Uh, and join her, it's the Reverend Teresa Danieli, whom you've had the, the blessing of hearing before, and she will be joining you. I will be back on the 19th in recorded version, and so, um, so we'll continue to be together. We're going up to Northern Wisconsin to a place called Iron River. Uh, we thought it would be a good idea to get away from all the busyness and social life back in the day when we reserved this cabin, not knowing that we would all be together for months on end beforehand. So uh, we are going to be way up north, and if we can get on with Wi-Fi, we definitely will. Otherwise, um, you, will, you will see me, uh, my holographic image will be present. Uh, so that's it for the announcements that I have. If you can think of something you think people need to know before we kind of take a break, Maybe raise your hand or wave and Stacy will acknowledge you. Bishop Dion is with us. Woo! Everybody give a greeting to Bishop Dion. So glad to see you. Thank you for being here. Well, good to be with you all this morning and thank you for inviting me to, to pop into your worship this morning. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. We are so excited to have you with us. Well, uh, thank you. Good to be with you. As I said, I, I'm not going to be able to be with you for Christmas in July, which I think is a wonderful idea. So Merry Christmas early. <laughs> and, and also to you. <laughs> I, I guess I say Happy New Year as well or <laughs> something. <laughs> Time is becoming a whole different thing for all I of know. us. I know. It might be Merry Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year. <laughs> Thank you. Well, thanks for being Good here. Good to see you all this morning. Thank you. So friends, we will um, go ahead now and take a little break and grab something to drink and eat and we'll be back. If you have to leave before